Hey everyone, welcome back to Morton's On The Move. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Tom. And today we are replacing the awning and slide topper fabric on our RV. We've been putting this job off for a while now because we find it kind of intimidating and we didn't know how hard or easy it would be to do this job ourselves. But today we have teamed up with our friends John and Peter of the RV Geeks as well as Tough Top Awnings to get this job done. John and Peter brought the tools and we've got the fabric here, so let's get to it. About a year ago, we started to consider replacing our awning fabric as we noticed it was wearing out. The edges were curling, tears were starting in the corners, and the main patio awning had become brittle where it was exposed to the sun and was cracking and had small holes in it. Besides dripping on us and looking terrible, we figured it was just a matter of time before a high wind day tore one of our awning toppers off. Originally, we were hesitant to replace the awnings ourselves as we just didn't know how challenging it would be. After watching some videos on the process and meeting up with our friends John and Peter of the RV Geeks who had done this before, we figured we would take a stab at it. The first step in this project is to measure your awnings and place the order for your new fabric. We used Tough Top awning fabric as it came highly recommended for its quality by the RV Geeks. When placing the order, a few measurements are required. For all awnings, measure the roller tube length from the inside of the end caps, then subtract an inch and a half to provide clearance on both ends of the tube. On the slide topper awnings, also provide the slide depth measurement. No need to provide patio awning depth measurements as they are standard. You can also measure your existing awning fabric width, but in our case the fabric had shrunk so measuring the tubes and subtracting an inch and a half would ensure a better fit with our new fabric. When placing the order, also specify the fabric color you desire. As our RV is mostly white, we chose to use white fabric all the way around. We decided to try and replace all of the awning fabric in one day on our three slide toppers and our patio awning. We started with the patio awning as we figured it would be the most challenging and take the longest. The first step is to get all of the tools required in order. The only tool we did not have was a set of ladders, so we rented two A-frame ladders for the day. After doing this project, I would recommend two ladders, but slide toppers can probably be done with one. Other tools required will depend on your awning type. We have Dometic A&E awnings, so this will pertain only to this type, but Tough Top Awnings website and the RV Geeks have covered many other types of awnings in their videos as well. Before starting, you're going to want to make sure that your awning spring is tight enough. If when you start to retract your patio awning, if it starts to roll up easily, then the spring is tight enough. But if you need to help it along by rolling it up, then you will need to add torsion to the spring, which you can do later in this project. Our awning rolled up easily, so we did not need to add additional spring torsion. The next step is to retract the awning all the way to the RV, then pin the awning slightly open so that the springs do not allow it to roll back up. One side of the awning has the latch that automatically locks the awning open while the other side does not, and that side needs to be pinned. Pinning it is done with a special tool that you can get from Tough Top Awnings or a similar skinny awl. On the end cap of the roller, you will see a few holes that you will insert the tool into to pin the awning roller. The pin position is about 90 degrees to the arm. You may be able to look through the end cap holes and see daylight through it when the holes line up. Ours was clogged and while we couldn't see it on the first pass, we needed to feel for it with the tool as we opened the awning. Unlatch the awning and bring it out a foot or so before pinning it. Once the awning was pinned open, we used a drill to remove the bolts at each end of the roller tube that connect it to the awning arms. If doing this project, the next step is where two ladders and two people are required. Place the ladders at either end of the awning and be sure they have good footings and the individuals that will be using them are confident in their balance and proficient in ladder use. With one person at either end, we lifted the roller tube up and out of the awning arms and slowly unrolled the fabric from the awning tube while walking down the ladder. Once we lifted the tube from the arms, they were free and could swing away from the RV. We had to push them back and latch them in place with a safety latch. This is where doing this project on a calm day is very helpful. Without anything to hold the awning, it could blow around and knock into the RV. We put a rag over an end that was against the RV to protect the RV's finish. With the awning roller hanging down, we then removed spring torsion from the unpinned end. By placing a rag over the awning arm connection, we then used a pair of vice grips to lock onto the connection and shaft. We made sure the vice grips had a very good grip and would not slip off. Next, with a good grip on the shaft, we released the spring catch. Slowly, without losing control, we unwound the shaft by rotating the vice grips in the direction the spring was trying to spin. We had to remember the direction and number of turns that it took for the spring to go limp as we will rewind the spring later with the same number of turns in the opposite direction. 
Once the spring was limp, the end cap could be removed to allow the fabric to come out. To do this, we had to drill out three rivets that hold the end cap on. We had to use a screwdriver to tap the rivets the rest of the way in after drilling off the head. Once the rivets had been removed, we marked the end tube rivet hole and the cap so that we could reassemble it in the same position later. With the cap unriveted, we pulled the entire spring assembly out from the tube. Setting the tube aside, we looked where the awning and the valence were installed in the rails on the tube and marked them with a V and an A respectively so that we could reinstall them in the same tracks later. In our case, the awning had a separate valence that was easily removed from the tube by sliding it out the now open end. We then removed the tube from the awning itself, and it's most easily done with three people. One person to hold the fabric while the other two slide the tube off. With the tube off, it was then time to remove the fabric from the RV. We located the securing screw that prevents the fabric from shifting in the track on the RV and removed it. In our case, the fabric could only be removed in the forward direction, but some RVs may differ. Regardless, you'll have to remove one awning arm that is obstructing the movement. This is done by removing two bolts that hold the awning arm to the RV and disconnecting it from the lower bracket. Make sure to remove other obstacles like gutter spouts that also may interfere with sliding the fabric out of the track. We then just slid the fabric out of the track by pulling hand over hand, and luckily it slid out very easily, but some may require more force. At this point, we are finally ready for the new fabric. To assist with the installation, we took a screwdriver and widened the end of the track on our RV, and then filed it smooth. We also sprayed the track with a silicone spray to help lubricate it. Then with a couple of people, we fed the new fabric's bead into the track and slid it to the approximate position. Once in the track, we reinstalled the awning arms and applied a generous bead of caulk to the screws to help seal them up. We then reinstalled the tube on the new fabric. Like the track on the RV, we used a silicone spray on the awning tube tracks for the awning and valence to assist with sliding the new fabric on. This is where our A and V marks from before come in handy so that we make sure to spray and install the awning and valence in the appropriate tracks. Again, using three people, we slid the tube onto the new fabric. The cap and spring assembly were then reinstalled to the tube, making sure to line up the marks from before. The cap was then secured to the tube using three new rivets. Once secured, we then prepared to rewind the spring by placing a rag over the shaft and once again connecting the vice grips. Remembering the number of turns we took out and going in the opposite direction that we unwound it, we slowly added the turns back into the spring. We made sure the latch was in the lock position to prevent the spring from unwinding. If you need more spring tension, now is the time to add it. Add a few extra turns, but also do the same on the other side, removing the pin and adding a few extra turns. Once the appropriate number of turns were put back into the spring, the end caps at both ends were evaluated to make sure they were both facing the same directions. The end caps can flip from top to bottom, and because the bolt only goes in one side, they both need to be in the same direction and position. When we were sure they were both facing the appropriate direction so that we could bolt them back into place, we prepared to reinstall the tube in the same way it came down, by rolling the fabric onto the tube while walking up the ladder. Before doing so, we measured the awning placement between the arms and shifted the fabric in the top track to get it even between the awning arms. We also measured the awning between the caps and centered the fabric on the roller. Once the roller was back at the top, the caps were placed in the awning arms and the bolts were reinstalled to hold it in place. The pin in the end of the awning that was holding the spring open was removed and the awning was allowed to close up to the RV. At this point, the alignment of the arms was checked and it was adjusted slightly by pushing it side to side. The awning was opened and closed a few times to make sure everything was good before installing the set screw. Then we called the job complete. We are very happy with how the job came out and the new fabric. Instead of a completely opaque material, the tough top awning is slightly translucent, which we like as it provides a nice soft light under the awning. Next, it was time to take on the awning toppers. With the slide all the way open, we first removed the anti-billowing device located on the end of the slide roller by removing two screws that hold it in place. We then unrolled the tube by hand until the fabric connection to the tube was pointing up, and we once again pinned the tube through the hole that became accessible after removing the anti-billowing device. Like on the main awning, we located the set screw that kept the awning from sliding in the track and removed it. Because our awning topper had shrunk so much, it had pulled away from the set screw, but we still had to remove it so we could install the new fabric. At this point, the fabric on the awning topper was free to be removed and we just pulled it out at one end. This exposed the top of the slide, so we took the opportunity to sweep and clean it. 
We again used the silicone spray in the tracks of the tube and the RV and widened and filed the end of the track to make installing the bead of the new fabric easier. Then with two people, we brought the new fabric up the ladder at one end and started feeding both the RV side and tube side beads into their tracks. It took a bit of back and forth motion, but the fabric slid into place relatively easily. If pulling from the top of the slide, be sure not to fall off the back when nearing the end. I had to get up on the roof to finish pulling the fabric into place. Once the fabric was all the way on, measurements were taken on the tube to assure that it was centered on the slide. Once centered, the spring tension was taken out of the roller by hand, and the pin was removed from the end of the roller. We slowly released the spring and allowed the fabric to roll up. The slide was then brought in and the alignment was checked by making sure the fabric rolled up evenly and did not get skewed. Adjustments were made on the RV side track position if necessary. With the slide all the way in, the anti-billowing device was reinstalled by placing it at the 1 o'clock position on the roller. Because the new fabric may differ in size, you may need to install the screws in new locations by drilling them into the roller. In our case, we had to bring the slide out about a foot or so to get the second screw installed. The anti-billowing device has a very simple operation. If the awning catches air while going down the road and the spring tension isn't enough to keep it rolled up, the anti-billowing device will contact the RV and prevent the awning from billowing open while on the road. Lastly, the set screw was reinstalled and we were done. We repeated the process on the other two slides. For some reason, I had envisioned the slide toppers being much more difficult to replace than they were. It turned out to be a very quick and easy task, taking maybe 15 minutes per slide topper. Overall, to answer the question of how hard is it to replace your awning fabric, I would say a &E slide toppers are very easy. The awning was a little more involved, but still within the realm of doable at home if you have the tools and a few extra hands. Two ladders and three people would be my recommendation to get it done quickly and easily. While there are numerous steps that need to be followed in order, they are all quite easy if you take them one at a time. We've had the new Tough Top fabric for a while now, and can say so far it's fantastic. The material is considerably thicker than what we removed and the stitching is far superior. The patio awning and slide topper fabric is slightly different. The slide toppers have no give in the fabric, as the topper springs allow for the flex. The awning fabric has a slight stretch to it, which helps take the load off the hardware. One unexpected, wonderful benefit from this project is that these new awning toppers do not flap in the wind like our previous fabric. While they will billow a little, the sound made inside the RV is so much lower. We frequently had to bring our bedroom slide in in high winds because of noise, and since the new fabric was installed, it has not been a problem. If you're interested in Tough Top Awning Fabric, you can receive a 5% discount on the material by using the discount code in the description and in the first comment below this video. While doing this replacement, John and Peter of the RV Geeks filmed their own video featuring just the patio awning portion of the replacement. They go into great detail, and to see their video on this project, we have placed a link in the description below. Or you can visit them at thervgeeks.com. Thank you so much for joining us today as we replace the awning fabric on our RV. <laughs> Look at that camera work. Make love to the camera.